This video will discuss parasites which afflict saltwater aquarium fish. Marine ick is probably the most commonly encountered and well-known marine parasite in our hobby. It is often debated whether this parasite can just be managed in a display tank or whether quarantine and treatment is needed. In my experience, your fish stocking list will mostly determine that. Hardy fish with a thick mucus coat have better natural defenses against parasites and worms. Conversely, species with a thin slime coat, such as tangs, are much more susceptible. I personally choose to quarantine all new fish additions to keep ick and other diseases out of my display tank. In my experience, trying to manage diseases in a closed system can be a risky proposition. The most notable symptom of ick is salt or sugar-like sprinkles on the body and fins, as you will see on the sail fin tang to the left. Behavioral symptoms include heavy breathing, scratching, appetite suppression, erratic swimming behavior, and paleness. However, keep in mind that some fish can be asymptomatic. It can be treated in a quarantine tank using hyposalinity, chloroquine, copper, or tank transfer method. Marine velvet disease is one of the most feared fish pathogens in our hobby. It can wipe out all of your fish in just a matter of days. Keeping velvet out of your display tank is a good reason why you should quarantine all new fish additions. If you do need to treat a fish with velvet, it is very important to provide a fish with temporary relief before beginning treatment and quarantine. Options for temporary relief include a 30-minute hydrogen peroxide bath, 45-minute formalin bath, 90-minute bath using Ruby Reef Rally, or a 5-minute freshwater dip. With velvet, the white dots are usually smaller and more numerous than with ick, or sometimes velvet can look like dust on a fish. It might be easier to see velvet by looking at the fish from an angle rather than looking straight at the fish's side. Try watching when the fish turns, and you might see the white dots sticking out from the body of the fish, like you see in the top photo. Another easy way is by looking at the fins, especially on light colored fish and those with translucent fins, like the one you see in the bottom photo. Some behavioral symptoms are the same as ick. Heavy breathing, scratching, appetite suppression, erratic swimming, and paleness. However, swimming into the flow of a water pump and displaying sensitivity to light are typically unique to velvet. Unfortunately, some fish can be asymptomatic. Velvet can be treated in a quarantine tank using chloroquine phosphate, copper, or two different modified versions of the tank transfer method. Velvet is far more dangerous than ick and thus would be very difficult to manage in a display tank. Now, I realize ick and velvet look very much alike. If you look at the two pictures of the hippo tanks, the one on top has ick and the one on bottom has velvet. Notice how the one on top has larger, oval-shaped white dots, ick, whereas the one with velvet, the white dots are smaller and perfectly round. Another rule of thumb is if you can count the white dots on a fish, most likely you are dealing with ick. If the white dots are too numerous to count, then there's a good chance it's velvet. Also, sometimes with velvet, the fish will have cloudy eyes. When in doubt, it's best to use a treatment which covers both diseases, which are copper, chloroquine are two modified versions of tank transfer method which are discussed on my forum. Brooklynella is a ciliate parasite with a direct life cycle. It lives, feeds, and reproduces directly on the fish. Therefore, transmission is primarily through direct contact with an infected specimen. Initially, an outbreak may resemble a white rash as seen in the photo at the top. The parasite spread all over the fish, as seen in the middle photo, until finally the fish's mucus or slime coat begins to peel or slough off, as seen in the bottom photo. The best treatment is a 45-minute formalin bath. Alternative treatments include a 30-minute hydrogen peroxide bath or 90-minute bath using Ruby Reef Rally. A 5-minute freshwater dip may provide temporary relief. After the bath or dip, it is advised to place the fish in a quarantine tank and dose metronidazole, for example, Seekim Metroplex, every 48 hours for 10 days. Uranema is a devastating parasite for two reasons. 
It is intracellular and thus can spread both externally and internally. There is also no fallow period for uranema in your display tank, which we will discuss in the next slide. If you get uranema in your display tank, it is best to avoid damsels and antheas forever. It may also be difficult to keep angel and butterfly fish without them getting infected. As you can see, the primary symptom of uranema is red sores on the fish. However, as previously mentioned, uranema can also spread internally out of sight. Unfortunately, any fish showing red sores should be humanely euthanized as the fish is not savable. Any fish sharing water with an infected specimen should be given a 60-minute formalin bath and then transferred into a new quarantine tank immediately. Once in quarantine, both dose and food soak Metro every 24 hours for 14 days. We've provided you with various treatments that can be used to cure sick fish in a quarantine tank environment. But what if the sick fish are in your display tank and you need to move them into your quarantine tank in order to treat them? What happens to any fish diseases left over in the display tank? Fortunately, all but one have a fallow or fishless period that you can utilize to starve them out of your display tank. This works because you are denying the parasites their food source, fish, to feed upon. It is important to note that the fallow period does not begin until all fish have been removed from an infected aquarium. Corals and inverts can remain in the display tank for the entire fallow period. There are two important caveats to the time frames listed here. Generally speaking, going six weeks fallow will starve all fish parasites and worms out of your aquarium except for uranema. As previously discussed, uranema is an opportunistic parasite which can subsist off detritus and bacteria in an aquarium almost indefinitely. So it is best to avoid chromis damsels, antheas, and other uranema prone species if you know that your display tank has been infected with uranema. Unfortunately, the only way to cleanse an aquarium of uranema is to sterilize it with chlorine and start over. The other caveat is that the life cycle of marine ick is temperature dependent, meaning in some cases low aquarium temperature has prolonged the life cycle. Therefore, we recommend that you raise aquarium temperature to 27 Celsius, which is 80.6 Fahrenheit, during the entire six-week fallow period for marine ick. Thank you for watching this video. See links in the comments section for more detailed information and join us on my forum for all reef aquarium related discussion.